Hello and welcome back inside the park. Nice, Paul. Nice trophy. <laughs> welcome back inside the park for me for podcast number 886. This is Todd. No, Todd, not that. AKA Negative Camber. You know what we do on race weekends. We watch one, then we talk about it. Then we watch one, then we talk about it. Come on, Todd. That's always what we do. But before talking about that race, I have to actually go find a professional race car driver and the sport manager of the Heart of Racing Aston Martin team in EMSA, who had a busy weekend. You know who this is. Rip from out of the wasteland. He's bad. He's beautiful. He's crazy. It's... Hello, everybody. This is Paul Charles, the, the international. Paul, you, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, uh, a Silverstone isn't the only airfield slash race car <laughs> racetrack uh, out there. You had a long, busy weekend at yeah. Sebring, did you not? Yes, we did. Only only a stone's throw away from the, what was happening in Formula One world, right? Yeah, yeah you so could probably almost smell the tire and rubber burning from Miami. Certainly could. Certainly could. Yeah, yeah it was. It was. Uh, yeah. Sebring, great track. I, I like it better than the Silverstone. So anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, it was a busy. We got three cars racing in the SRO, and in the end, it ended up being a pretty successful weekend. Double uh, podium. Yeah, double podiums. Uh, actually, triple podiums. Quite honestly, ah. yeah, double podium in the last race of the weekend. But yeah, we got uh, four podiums this weekend, and all the cars are now in their three perspective championships a second in each championship. Nice. So. Yeah, nice. it's uh, as you know, sports car racing has this whole BOP thing and everything, and uh, our car wasn't the fastest out there. Uh, maybe it was the third or fourth fastest car. Um, but as we are, always say in in the in the pre race meetings, it's not you know you don't have to have the fastest car, but we've got the the a great powerful lineup when you've got dual dual drivers in the thing, and you know we win the race by our combination of team and driver combos. Then maybe even if the car isn't the fastest and uh, uh that kind of played out you know we're, yeah. we're, we're hunting for a championship and so we're, we're still cool still right in it second in every championship you ever yeah it's still pretty good yeah <laughs> i mean cool. it, yeah i mean you know it's 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 our, our motto is to try and finish every race if you can't finish second finish third you know just just stay in the hunt yeah. um and if the car isn't the fastest car out there then you Let's try and figure out a way of getting it as high up there. And I think we kind of overachieved where the car was this weekend. And so everyone went away pretty happy, even though you always want to win. But um, I think we, we maximized what we had. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Good hot, job. Hot down there in Florida. Hot yeah, everywhere. That's... Yeah, that's yeah. what it seemed like uh, yeah. at the at the Grand Prix in Miami. It seemed uh, uh, pretty hot. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of the cars struggling uh for that the track the track changed a bit since its inception since the first race i think it is delivering better racing these days than yeah. it did that first uh first uh, time first year um not sure if it was all down to the heat or the tarmac certainly a lot of the teams were strugg struggling with degradation and grip including red bull i might add um this weekend it was interesting given the limited practice due to the sprint race this weekend, but after watching the sprint and then the real race, I'm not a hundred percent convinced in my mind that the sprint race format as is, is a really good entertainment vehicle for F1. Um, no. I think the race was far better than the sprint. Um, uh, and I, you know, look, I, I know there's a lot of people who love the sprint and even sky sports, they love it. And that's great. And I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy on this, but, uh, I just believe it needs, the format needs tweaking. Something needs to change. It's just not, um, yeah. or it not existing at all. <laughs> or Not existing would be good with me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Not a big I, I know, you know, they speculate, oh, how are you going to make it? And then people talk about reserve. I, I'm fine with having a sprint race at the end of the season. And throwing all the reserve drivers in it and let them have it at it at Abu Dhabi, you know, after the yeah. championship's over. But uh, yeah, it's it's just it's it's a bit more of an annoyance than it is an excitement for me, anyway. I'm, yeah, kind of. You know, but for fans, I guess if you're at the track, it's yep. you, you get to see a race in two days. So maybe, maybe that that's what they want. That's what they get. Maybe, but there's support races, and my gosh, I feel like. Um... 
uh, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't turn around with bumping into either social media or, or uh, the feed with the, the Formula Academy. And, and then, right. uh, you know, that was prevalent, you know, everywhere um, as a support race. And then mm-hmm. I watched some of the Porsche race on YouTube, I think, is support race. Yeah. Um, and then I saw uh, another race. Uh, was it the Porsche Fanatec uh, where your boy Spencer won that? Yeah, that was that was uh, us at Sebring. Yep. It's Sebring, yeah, yeah, Spencer won that race. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. So he that's good. They. Porsche? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was driving a Porsche, and he's driving for us next week at Laguna. So he'll be back oh, in the Laguna. hot of racing okay. at Laguna. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if he was still going to do some more stints with you guys or not. So that yep. was good. Yeah. But um, but anyway, yeah, that's my, you know, I'll, I'll stop grousing. Yeah, it's like, you know, I know it's old school, but I think, you know, it's all the build up to. A, the big event but when you have a an event like that right before it i don't know it just doesn't as yeah. you say there's support races there's other things to do it's like hey the, the, they're at the super bowl for a week before they play that game but what if they play you know like a a half 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 court <laughs> you know yeah. game the day before would you the, what does that mean to you i don't know I, I sometimes it's nice to have a slow build up to something super important and when you it's kind of a distraction in a way. Yeah, the way that but. the way that Formula One is now, it's you know, the sprint races are typically pretty straightforward in how they're gonna finish and it mm-hmm. I feel it kinda kinda deflates Sunday's race a little bit. Whereas yeah. if you if you juxtapose that with Moto GP, I mean they any anything can happen in Moto GP. <laughs> in a yeah. sprint race you have Maverick, you know, winning uh, right. the, the, over the weekend and where did he come from right so it's kind of like formula one doesn't have that dynamic ability to see that sort of radical yeah. and they've already yeah. added enough races to the calendar you know what i'm they saying have. it's like yeah, 24 th- th- there's a whole different thing within a team building up for a race versus a practice a qualifying yeah. and so on a team it's a whole different dynamic and, and stress quite honestly right um and one probably don't really want, I would say, if you're within a Formula One team, you know, but uh, right. that's what's di- dictated. I, I just don't want any more. Just stop adding them. I know. If you're going to do it, I, I, I think four, whatever, I don't know, rotate them around the different tracks if we have to do yeah. it. But let's just not get to the point where we're adding sprints to every race of the year. It's ridiculous. Or give up polls for qualifying. Yeah. <laughs> something. Or points, you know. Um, and also, I, it it wasn't lost on me that the race, if I'm honest, seemed quite a bit more muted this year than in past years with all the pageantry, celebs, people, uh, and paddock, and traffics, mm-hmm. and all of that. I didn't catch you know? any of that, but yeah, yeah well, tend to try yeah, and avoid it anyway. But pretty lucky because even Martin's grid walk, which you remember the first year, I mean, you couldn't <laughs> turn around on the grid, you know, with all of the celebrities and everybody yeah. just jammed on there. And this year he had to scramble around just trying to find anybody to talk to, uh, which in my mind, I, I enjoyed that a lot better. Um, I guess Miami probably figured out that they couldn't out Vegas, Vegas. <laughs> so yes. I try, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I thought it was a, a much more like a race and less like yeah. a Yeah, let's make the cars and event. the drivers the stars rather than the audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, let's jump into the review. We'll talk about how they finished a huge, huge win for Lando Norris. P1 in his McLaren, Oscar Pastor in P13. Lando made the most of the serious upgrade package that McLaren brought, and you could even see that back on Friday. Unfortunately, Oscar only about 50% of those upgrades uh, Lando had the full package. Mm-hmm. Um, Oscar will have the full package come in Emila in two weeks' time. But uh, he set a serious marker down in SQ2 uh, that had everybody's attention. It was like, whoa, that is some serious pace set in the fastest lap. Yeah. Um, he got robbed in the sprint race, unfortunately, so we didn't see that uh, capability in the sprint race, so nobody really knew going into Sunday, what kind of pace they may have. Um, He made up for it on Sunday, though, and while 
I think, look, you have to admit that he benefited from the safety car. There's no doubt about that. But I would say that his strategy and pace were definitely heading for a P2, P3 result regardless. Mm -hmm. So a podium was absolutely in the cards. But even at the restart, though, Lando had terrific pace that Max could not match. He said, I just, he said, Max said that Lando was just flying. I couldn't match it. There's no way. Uh, what was also interesting is that the safety car, Paul, picked up Max and not Lando. <laughs> so they had an error, error, and this gave Lando the ability to come around and get that free stop, right? Um, and But like I said, regardless, I think he had the pace uh, to at least podium, and I would argue even possibly have a sniff at the win, even yeah. without that free stop. But it, a bit odd to see the safety car pick up Max and not the leader. Yeah, not really acceptable, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't know what they said on the Sky feed, but on our feed they were like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're used to picking up Max, so it's reasonable that they would make that mistake. But it's completely unreasonable that they would make that mistake. Yeah. I, th I think they were very lucky that Lando probably was the the right guy to win the race. You know, he had yeah. the pace and um, I, I don't think the safety car era actually made a difference to where he was going to come out of the pit lane, just judging by where the gap was and the pace that he had, even if he shuffled out and came second, I still think at a restart, he would have handled Max. I think yeah. the car, he, the combination of Norris and, and, and the McLaren were the right, rightful winners of the race. So I think they dodged a bullet there. But yeah. um, they need to go back to their their um, procedures because usually they'd always call out, okay, leader is this car, pace car, please pick up the leader. But they, they, they did get it wrong. So they definitely need to go back and look at that because you don't need an error like that. Surfacing again because next time it could be a whole big game changer. We've already seen them make some pretty big mistakes and affect some big changes to some pretty serious consequences and we don't. They definitely want to nip that in the bud. Yeah, for sure. And even, I would say, you know, from a strategy standpoint, I think even before the safety car, it was clear that, that Lando's tires were doing incredibly well. And yeah. the idea here was to run long until he started to either lose time um, or allow for a safety car, which which actually did materialize, which is great for him. But it also meant even without that safety car, he would have been long, and then late in the race, he would have been on the freshest tires. Um, amazingly, though, his pace never dropped off. No. He was behind, stuck behind Perez because Perez came dive bombing into turn one, so he dropped back. He was behind Perez. Mm -hmm. Yep, couldn't couldn't get, didn't have the pace to get around that uh, Red Bull down the straights. The Red Bulls were wickedly fast down the straights. But once Perez boxed and got out of the way, Lando went to work, and from that moment on, he was driving brilliantly. His his tires never really lost pace. Uh, mm -hmm. He had great pace, hunted down Carlos Sainz, um, and I think that was the key moment from Perez boxing until that safety car. That was when Lando executed perfectly. Yeah, you make your own luck. Um you know, you go, oh, well, he stayed out late and he just lucked in. Well, no, he stayed out late because he had the pace. And yeah. and they'd engineered the car to, to make those mediums last. And they got their head around the tire and the track and everything. So they, they earned the opportunity. That's, you know, in sports car racing, we try to do that all the time. is Because it, they're longer races and a lot more scenarios are coming to play. So um, deal with that on a daily basis. So, yeah, they, they earned their own luck. They got the clean air. He put, put the power down. He got the... He closed the gaps, and um, yeah, they once you, when you have pace, that's helpful, right? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it, get, it opens some options up, even if things go a little bit awry. But ultimately, everything went perfect for him, and that that's great. But even if it hadn't, they still they still were there. So I think they earned they earned the right. And who knows how long those mediums could have got? A few other yeah. teams got the mediums right. A few other teams really struggled. Um, some teams, I think, change just for the sake of changing to some degree, yeah. um, trying to play, you know, how the race was going and, and got it a bit wrong. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, his first win in F1, a huge moment for him and if, a bit of a testament to what the paddock thinks of Lando. Um, I'd say arguably one of the most or one of the most popular drivers in the grid. Yeah. 
Um, and all of the other drivers like Fernando and Carlos and uh, Ricardo and Max, Lewis, uh, you know, they all came up and, and uh, congratulated him. They were all super George Russell. They were all super happy for him. Yeah, um, yeah. And these, these and are guys he'd been, yeah, he's been racing against yeah. since they were carts. It still amazes to me when you see those pictures of Leclerc and Russell yeah. and Norris all standing next to each other, little yeah. eight-year-old kids, and all of them made it. What a, what a, yeah. what a what a field they must have been having out there in right. the kart racing. Um, right. But yeah, a lot of those guys, they're, they're teammates, not just rivals. They've been teammates. And we know your teammate is your bitterest rival most of the time. Yeah. So it really does say something about Lando as a person that all those people would come up and be really super happy for him. Um, you know, we, 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 we see personas in interviews and things like that. We don't know what goes on by the, behind the scenes. We know a few things that go on behind the scenes that, you know, isn't necessarily things we want to see. But uh, with Lando, it seems, you know, he plays it straight and um, he is who he is and, uh, you know, all the better for it, right? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a few drivers on that grid that if they got their first one, win, I don't think you'd see all the accolades <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from other drivers. But Lando certainly, right? Uh, you know, he's he's as is as big on charm as he is talent. So uh, good mm -hmm. on him. Yeah, super. Yeah, absolutely. For super super happy yeah. for him. He Very was... happy for Zach. That entire mm -hmm. team who have done a Herculean effort under a cost cap, I might add. Uh, bringing that massive upgrade late last year, continuing yeah. that momentum. I guess the big question now, Paul, is, is this upgrade package, has it put the cat amongst the pigeons with Red Bull and Ferrari? Yeah. Or is this just a track-specific, you know, one-off? And that's a big question. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say it's a bit of both. Mm -hmm. It's that, you know, because we saw how the Red Bull was kind of not really getting away with anything this weekend, even compared to Ferrari. Yeah. Um, even if McLaren hadn't turned it on, Ferrari were fairly close most right. of the race. That's um, true. Uh, the McLaren was definitely better than Ferrari, but I, but, I think. But Max only had pulled by what, under a tenth? To yeah, play, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. but sometimes they, they, they don't necessarily win pole by a lot because they still they they focus on their race yeah. pace and their race setup and everything because they don't need to don't but need i think to. here they really were doing everything they could and it wasn't enough so i i think it definitely straps track specific with the tire and and the track but i definitely think mclaren also made a lot of gains and i think it's still showing that they're closing in on red bull yeah. um whether they there yet or not or be there every week we don't know but definitely definitely closing in yeah and spare a thought for toto <laughs> his mercedes <laughs> engine just won the race <laughs> Again. in a different car yeah though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah which yeah. is tough um yeah. oscar piastri you know it's hard to he ends up uh down a p13 but it's hard to take the stuffing out of him i mean he mm -hmm. looked like early in the race he was going to be the highest play, placing mclaren um, yeah. You know, he got he made what gained three places at turn one with uh, the Perez uh, torpedo. Um, he got hobbled by the safety car, though. That did not help him out. Um, and that's unfortunate because he looked like he was going to be a very high placing McLaren as well. I think he would have yeah. been possible podium as well. Um, once he lost ground behind that safety car, then he got into his tango with Carlos and, uh, that created a lot of friction. Um, he ends up touching the back of Carlos's car. Carlos got a penalty for it, but ended up hitting the back of the car, damaged his front wing, had to box for a new front wing, came back out towards midfield, was able to claw back to P13. I don't think he can take much away from him because I think he looked pretty damn good early on. He did. He looked great, actually. Yeah, it looked yeah. really good. Had the pace, and as I said, keeping everyone honest, quite honestly, at the front. Yeah. So it, it was, it, and especially if that car isn't a complete package yet. Um, I, I was surprised they brought him in with that For damage, but I guess they yeah. know better than I do how much damage and how much pace he was going to lose with that damage. But yeah. I didn't see any way forward with coming in and changing that wing. But as I said, you know, maybe it was a, a pretty bad damage, and he was going to just go backwards anyway and better to fit a new wing and maybe there's another safety car and he can make some gains i don't know but it, it yeah. didn't seem like the best move in the world but i can't uh without the data it's hard to know yeah um, I, I, and with the incident i don't know do you think Carlos should get a penalty i mean i don't 
I, no, I think I don't. that you know they hot. You know things happen when you run in side by side in corners. It's not egregious. He comes in, loses the back end a little bit. You know they're both you know fighting for it. I don't, I don't like penalties like that. I mean, I there's either. things when people punt you or you know dive inside you at the last second. I think when you're fighting for a corner, we want to see that, and it's really hard to call a blame factor on Carlos for that, other than you know trying to be a competitive guy and trying 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 to you know, finish as high as he can. I don't think it was anything egregious. Sorry. I, yeah. I didn't like I mean, it. No, I didn't either. And, you know, uh, you can, I don't know, you can call me names, but I'm, I'm kind of like Lewis. I, I like hard racing. Um, yeah. And I, 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 when I get to Kevin and Haas, I'll talk about it there in more detail, but they had got that call wrong. I think they, they, you know, this, this micromanaging a race, Mm -hmm. I'm over. I'm over. It's been going on now for several years, and I'm so over micromanaging the races. Let them race. If 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 one's getting aggressive, shortcuts came, then black and white flag them. You know, warn yeah. them. If that if they keep doing it, park them. Right. Yeah. I don't. I, it just. But let's get back to racing. I mean, you know, at this point, um, they would have incarcerated Jill Villeneuve and <laughs> yes. Renee Arnoux. You know, absolutely, yeah, and and yet that was one of the most exciting battles in F one history, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, yeah, it frustrates me to no end. Um, mm -hmm. And but that's just me. Uh, let's talk about Red Bull. You had uh, Sergio Perez in P four, Max in P two. Max was struggling this weekend with grip and balance, and he even was surprised when he got pole. He because <laughs> he knows he was struggling with that car, and he said, "Gosh, what happened to the other cars?" He really <laughs> didn't think he was going to have pole position. Yeah, um, and <clears throat> so that was difficult. Um, those issues revealed themselves once Lando took the lead and got that free pit stop. Uh, you could tell, uh, you know, Max just couldn't rotate that car. He was vulnerable out there uh, and a bit exposed. And typically it's, it, you know, the main issue was the, he wasn't able to rotate the car. The, the front end wasn't as pointy as he typically likes it. Yeah. Um, and he was complaining about that. It, now, he didn't help matters much by running over the bollard, which was <laughs> ill-placed. Uh, and after the race, he <laughs> said that the team discovered that there was a hole in the floor. They were thinking maybe mm. that may have caused it and, and cost him a little time finishing seven, almost eight seconds behind yeah. Lando. That would make sense. Yeah. Max didn't uh, benefit from the safety car, just didn't have the pace to take the battle back to Lando. And although he wasn't happy with his P2 performance, he was very happy and very magnanimous uh, about Lando. He was sure his buddy, was. And yeah. uh, he was very happy. He said, oh, you know, I'm elated that he won, uh, which was great. Uh, mm -hmm. But all that being said, uh, Paul, that, uh, that car, you know, typically Max is a type of driver. I got to be honest, I was watching the onboards during qualifying and the ghost car uh, that Aunt Davison did with uh, with Max and, and Charles Leclerc. And Max is just driving at a whole different level. Uh, you can yeah. argue it's the Red Bull car, but Perez has the same car. Mm -hmm. Max is just driving at a different level. And I was a little surprised that during the race he couldn't he couldn't find a way around whatever issue he was having with that car because that's typically what you see Max do, you know? Yeah. And so it was a little surprising, but, but it, it just tells you that Red Bull was struggling here. Yeah. I mean, but, but from what he's, what he was talking about, it sounds like what we usually do in debriefs is like the cars on top of the surface rather than pushing down in the surface, not just the front end wasn't working. The rear end wasn't working either. Correct. All right. Yeah. So he's just kind of can't get the car to, manipulate quickly mm -hmm. either way and uh, that's difficult to get to get his, and if the it isn't just... paul then you're waiting on every corner yeah and it, yeah you, you just don't you know it's not going to transition well it's not going to turn in well it's not going to accelerate off the corners well because it's sitting on top rather than digging in and um not fun car to drive when when the, when they're feeling like that quite honestly you feel a little detached from everything uh, ultimately, you you want to feel like that car is trying to dig a hole into the into the ground yeah. when you're driving, right? And then even even if it's got a little understeer that you wouldn't like, you can still change and, and manhandle the car a little bit yeah. to 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 make it pointy with with different things with what you're doing with the brake and everything. But if the car really is just kind of on the surface, 
there's nothing you can do with transitioning the weight because there's nothing digging into the surface to kind of bite yeah, into. Just no that bite. makes any sense at all. But yeah, it does. Kind of, yeah, yeah, if you if you don't have bite into that corner, yeah, and that confidence that you've got that bite that you can rotate that car and lean on it hard, yeah, um, then you're just it's a waiting game and waiting for every corner mm-hmm. to develop and and um, and that's yeah. got to be maddening. And I remember you know you've talked about in the past you know about understeer and and some of the drivers prefer a little understeer, whereas like Max, Vettel, Lewis, you know, uh, Fernando, they all like uh, a, a very pointy front end. Right. You know, because they don't like waiting on it to finally grip up and turn in. They hate that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, like like my my first ever coach, Pete Argetsinger, R.O.P. Pete. But, um, you know, he was just saying, he, he would, he, he was like, I'm not going to wait for the oversteer to happen. I'm going to make it happen so I don't have to, think about it anymore and just get in it you know uh which is a great great point it's like you just chuck it in and then okay here we go uh but rather than like is it gonna happen is it gonna happen oh there it is you know make it happen and then get on with the job on the exit yeah right right (laughs) that's what those guys do yeah yeah unfortunately it's not what sergio did uh he uh he had a serious lock up in turn one I, you know, I, I guess, you know, he had that clear shot all the way down the inside, but it almost seemed like the corners crept up on him and surprised him or, you know, yeah. he just locked up and slid through narrowly yeah. missing his teammate, Max, and and took everybody with him off the side. Well, I'll know. tell you one thing. If he was going to hit anyone, it's going to be everyone else but Max. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. He's locked up. He's yeah, it's like, oh, left. Lock. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. But um, yeah. I'm not taking that guy up. Still trying to get a ride <laughs> yeah. for next year. I'll yeah. hit all these other dudes, but not that guy. <laughs> not that guy. Uh, yeah. So he's unfortunate. Uh, he's uh, he struggled this weekend too. He boxed twice uh, for then hard and then medium, and said yeah. that he, he. It was interesting. He said he really struggled on the mediums, mm. um, and said that uh, they made changes overnight. He said that clearly come Sunday that they just kind of went down a wrong direction for him, and it didn't work for him. Um, he's surprised there was a lack of grip in turn one. Um, that caught him off guard, and he ran uh, deep and and nearly took everybody out. But uh, yeah, bit of a Grosjean moment. But uh, uh, fortunately, avoided everybody, and everybody avoided him. Yeah, very fortunate. Yeah, not 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 the best weekend for Sergio. But once yeah. again, you know, we're leaning into the you know how the how the car was working on the tire, being on yeah. the surf. You know, it's like maybe maybe it's tough tough for them to get temperature in the tire if the car's not working itself into the into the asphalt so um yeah yeah maybe a bit off there i i don't think it was it was a bit of a mistake but not a lot of a mistake but the consequences of turn one at yeah. that point are, are dire right so yeah, uh, yeah. little lockups makes a big difference when there's five cars within a couple of meters of you yeah it sure does and i think you know i think clearly this track does not flatter the Red Bull chassis, period. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the conclusion can draw. I think uh, we'll see a different Red Bull at MLN in two weeks. Yeah. Um, Ferrari, Charles Leclerc, P2, Carlos Sainz, P5. Uh, Charles struggled early in the weekend, but did better in the sprint and the actual race. Charles said that he was lucky to survive turn one and then engaged in tire management after that and stopped early. So the virtual safety car and safety car cost him. Um, They were on uh, older tires late in the race. So P2 is a good result. They were able to do some undercut during their box strategy. Uh, But, um, uh, you know, I would say... P3, you mean, right? Uh, yes. Sorry, yes. P3. Um, I, didn't, I didn't want you to get, you know, hundreds of emails. I but... will. I would, too. Every, <laughs> every time I'm wrong, you know, everybody keeps me frosty. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, a P3 result, good result for Ferrari. I don't think Ferrari looked horrible this weekend. I think uh, uh, in Charles's hands, you know, he had that spin early on. Um on the weekend, but really came back on the sprint, looked good, finishing well in the sprint, great points haul, weren't miles away from the Red Bull. Um, I would say that given that McLaren won, Mm -hmm. um, I think the opportunity was possibly there for Ferrari. They just, maybe they were struggling a little bit on this track too, like Red Bull was, but uh, it didn't happen for Charles. But not a bad race for him. No, no, it's okay. Um, I think, 
Ferrari didn't seem very disappointed after the race. I think they yeah. came away with it. I mean, the thing about McLaren is it's the inspiration for everyone to know that things are possible, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And Ferrari, we know, have done a pretty good job and were as close as anyone could get to a Red Bull. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a few adjustments here and clicks there, like they could be doing the same thing that McLaren's doing at some of these races. Um, yeah. yeah, without McLaren there, it would have been a Ferrari versus Red Bull again, right? So yeah. um, I think uh, they're doing a good job. I think Charles was managing his tires there that first stint, and Sainz yeah. was like, oh, I think I have pace on him. But then we saw as the stint went on that then Charles could then pull away from Carlos. Yeah. Um, so there's always tires management going on there. So it's funny when people start squawking about pace and everything. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're not switching yeah. positions, Carlos. Come on now, <laughs> don't be silly. Yeah. Yeah, Charles is driving to a Delta for a reason. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Carlos got pushed wide at turn one, lost two spots. He clawed them back, uh, got frustrated with Oscar, and eventually clashed with the Aussie, which garnered a post-race penalty, dropping him to fifth, even though he finished fourth on the track. Uh, if I'm honest, it was a little bit of a ragged race for Carlos, mm-hmm. given uh, recent form. Uh, I think he's looked stellar, but be but be fair to him. He boxed one lap before the safety car, and had they waited, he felt like he was absolutely would have been in the mix to win the race. Mm. Uh, and so he said, you know, we boxed a lap before the safety car, and had that not happened, he felt the win was on. Yeah. Um, still. As I said, big picture is both Ferraris in the points. That's great for their battle against Mercedes and McLaren in the Constructors' Championship. They finished two Ferraris. Uh, yes, there was a McLaren ahead of them, but there was two Ferraris ahead of Oscar So, uh, and in the points. So that was good. Not a bad weekend for them. And it was great to see even see Fred Vasseur over at the McLaren uh, uh, uh in the paddock uh, is celebrating and spraying the whole team with champagne. Uh, they had the whole team picture up there. Yeah. And everybody was in McLaren and they're all there getting pictures. <laughs> and Fred was in the audience. And right after the pictures, he comes running in with a bottle of champagne sprayed everywhere. Just great to see that camaraderie. And yeah. that is not what you would have seen from a former uh, Ferrari team boss. Trust me. No, as I said, that's what I'm saying. McLaren is like an inspiration. It's like every, yeah. everyone against Red Bull. Can yeah. someone beat them? You know, right. it's like we did it, we did it, we all did it. <laughs> yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. be telling them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Carlos was pretty funny on the radio. I thought <laughs> you'd be <laughs> telling McLaren what to do. You'd be telling them to you'd let me tell- buy. Yeah, you'd no, be telling just them. Leave me alone, Ricky. Uh, he was not happy. <laughs> Ricky, you'd be telling them. He was but, not uh, a happy Spaniard. No, uh, no. But, sure. Yeah, as you said. Yeah, what one lap different pit stop time could have changed his whole race but he was a little, little ragged but it was it was a feisty race quite yeah, honestly was. i don't I, you know I, I i don't think he was rough i think it was just a feisty race there was a lot going on there was a lot of passing was. going on it was an enjoyable race to watch for sure all the way down the field all the way down there we saw a lot of yeah. a lot of to and fro and carlos was obviously in the mix quite a right. bit in the highlight reel so yeah. yeah and carlos but, uh, to miami because i'm i'm not a big fan of racing around parking lots yeah, but they've done a lot of work on this track, and it, yeah. it is producing some really good racing. So you know, I eat crow on that. I think it it was a good race. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we we talked about it with Vegas. It's like not always the most interesting track. Yeah, can actually make better actually racing on the track. Yeah, right? you got better yeah. tracks that are just phenomenal to drive, like Spa and Monaco and things Suzuka, like that. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily make for an exciting race, but sometimes a simplified track where everyone's a little close, and I think the like field Red is pretty Bull tight, Ring. right? Um, that that it kind of leads to pushing everyone together, and that leads to some some good fight, fighting. I think the Miami fans should have been very happy with uh, what they were watching out there. I, yeah. I certainly did enjoy the race when I finally got to see it, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mercedes Lewis Hamilton P6, George Russell P8. Weekend started rough for both of them, but I will say that Lewis recovered, I think, really well come Sunday with a very good drive to P6, despite having a Haas car in his grill all weekend long. I mean, <laughs> yes. It's like a bad piece of gum on the bottom of his shoe. He just couldn't get the Haas off of him. He was shaking it, you know? How many, how many cars did they end up for this race? 
I know, out there loud. must have been 20 Haases in that race. <laughs> yeah. Is Gunther like, uh, in this car? He's driving like it. Every time he passed a Haas, he had another Haas in front of him. <laughs> yeah. it's poor Lewis, good grief. Uh, Lewis was digging really deep this weekend, trying to deliver out of that car. He was able to overcome some of the inconsist- the inconsistencies in this car is what, I mean, from a driver perspective, be driving you mad. Mm-hmm. You know, they never know what's going to show up out of the box. You know, and that inconsistency, uh, he was able to drive through that and have a march forward to P six. Was even trying to battle Sergio. He only finished a second behind Sergio. Yeah. Uh, was on the radio asking for more power, different settings to take the fight to Sergio. Didn't materialize, but uh, still, given uh, what I saw. Uh, from the onboards, uh, from Lewis, uh, I think a P6 is a is a damn good finish. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, he was feisty. He was he was on it. He was probably. In, yeah. I guess the car was giving him some decent feedback to get get into it, if, even if the car isn't as fast as a couple of the other cars on there. Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes it's nice to get a little grit your teeth and just start throwing a car around, which you kind of did. Yeah. But yeah, the Haas thing was just hilarious. <laughs> it was just, funny. It but was Lewis like, said he loved it. He goes, I, I love hard he? racing. Yeah. yeah, he said, I, you know, the, it was fun with Kevin. I love hard racing and oh. uh, I enjoyed it, you know. Good for him then. And people said, well, he was complaining over the radio. Well, of course he's going to complain. Yeah. Every driver is going to complain like that to try to get an advantage and get right. the race to that's, that's, that's what you do. That's what you do. But he enjoyed it. He loved mm. the hard racing. Uh, George, on the other hand, said there was something off with his car. Um, the speed just wasn't there for him. Um, and he started on used medium, so that was a, a bit difficult. While Lewis was on new hards, and when they switched to the hards, he said he had no pace mm-hmm. on the hards. Uh, the battles with Hulkenberg cost really both drivers a lot of time, and both missed out on benefiting from the safety car. So they boxed before it came out. So they didn't get that benefit, unfortunately. Ultimately, yeah. the team said they were really struggling on the slow corners. And you could certainly see that on Lewis's onboards. I mean, he was battling that car, and it was in those corners, constantly catching it or fighting uh, uh, balance issues uh, for most of the most of the weekend. And mm. George just said they need to go back and figure out because his pace just evaporated it, compared to Lewis. He just wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very mediocre George weekend. Yeah. Um. But you know the the car isn't great, and I think this isn't that been the the whole thing the whole year has been slow slow to slow medium turns has yeah. been their yeah. thorn in their side. So yeah, they definitely do need to get some work on that mechanical grip rather than just make it an aero car or something like that. But yeah, I agree. I agree with George. The team needs some perspective. Mm. <laughs> on the slow corner. I don't know. Yeah. They're smart men and women over there. Surely they'll figure it out. But, um, yeah, tough. tough. Yeah. Um, RB, uh, Daniel Ricardo, P15, Yuki Sonoda, P7. Yuki had a great race. Uh, had the same strategy as Lando and executed it uh, like Lando did. Benefited from the safety car. Moved him up to P7. Yuki said he, he, said he made a mistake at the start, but then he said, I recovered very well and executed the strategy perfectly. <laughs> well done, Yuki. Yeah. Uh, if you can't be your own fan, Yuki, you know, who's going to be, right? <laughs> well, I think, I think he knows right. how he much crap he's being given, certainly from yes. me. Yeah, and I, right. And I think there's been a very big push to change Yuki. I mean, I've I seen agree. him in interviews and things like that, and how he talks about his team, and he's he's getting a it's lot a more polished. It's a kinder, Yuki. Yeah, I think I, th- I I think there's still a Yuki boiling under there, quite <laughs> yeah, honestly. Too. But there's I but I undertow. think he yeah, I think he knows that it's a very critical time in his career. It is, and um, he's turning up the pace a little bit, consistent pace. And and he's behaving server over the microphone and in his comments and things like that. So I think he knows what could potentially be up for grabs or what he could potentially lose forever. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think he's Somebody doing a good job. Somebody told him that this kind of f bombing tirade and stuff ain't ever going to yeah. work at Red Bull. So that is definitely so if you been going want the on. Red Bull yeah. seat. You got to stop that crap out yeah. right now. Because or you want to see it at all? Work. Quite honestly, you want to see yeah. it all. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, with Red Bull and V Carb or whatever they're called, um, 
you know they've got a few drivers in the pool that aren't even on the on, on the roster yet. You know, you got Liam, yeah, like you got Liam. Carlos Sainz could be a number two to Verstappen, and then then who yeah. goes where, right? So right. I think there's they're definitely having to fight it out for 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 their careers at this point. But he's yeah. doing a good job in doing that. So I I, I do beat on Yuki, but I've, I mean I think I gave him drive the race a couple of races ago. So you did. Um, you know maybe maybe I'm I'm softening up on the wee fella. You yeah. This is the happy fun Yuki. <laughs> uh, Dan, on the other hand, had a great sprint, scored yeah. great points in the sprint. I was super excited to see Dan kind of recover, find his mojo, qualified for the sprint well, ends up uh, doing well in the sprint, great points yeah. haul in the sprint. And I thought, all right, let's just replicate that on Sunday. And that's what he wanted to. He was definitely looking for a points haul on Sunday. Unfortunately, he was stuck in traffic for most of the race. He said he just didn't have the pace. And he said, I didn't have any of the pace I had when I, when I was in clean air in the sprint race. Yeah. And, and because of all that traffic. Locked but he also had a bad there, qualifying and then he had a penalty. Had a so, qualifying I mean, and, and the penalty, and that's why he was back there. And, yeah. uh, um, you know, had he qualified better for the race may have been a different, uh, yeah, different result. Exactly. But, yeah. uh, yeah. but in the but, end, they pocketed 12 total points out of this weekend between Dan's Saturday performance and Yuki's Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, good points all for the team. Yeah, absolutely. It turned it um, around, but yeah, Ric Ricardo still, yeah, <laughs> as I said, with Ricardo, it's like you can have those sprint races, but you got to be consistent and just, yeah. you know, that, that qualifying just didn't, that's difficult. It's difficult yeah. to come back through there. You're not in a car that's superior that you can fight your way through, you know, three, four sets of manufacturers right. so yeah the qualifying. unlikely you're going to make it out yeah it's always going to put you on the back foot yep aston martin lance p17 fernando alonso p9 fernando benefited from the safety car and despite a rough saturday he was able to claw some points out of the weekend on sunday fernando said that he had more pace than quali during the race and when he boxed during the safety car, it changed their strategy a bit and allowed them to fight for a top 10 of the points, which he did. Uh, good to see Fernando uh, do that. Fernando, a, a little grumpy this weekend, not happy with the lack of penalties for uh, Lewis Hamilton on the sprint race. Mm -hmm. uh, went and saw the FIA and said, I think, you know, is there a nationality thing going on here? Because <laughs> the Spanish drivers get constant penalties and the british drivers don't so what's going on here uh that shocking it's a, a sport. Uh, i don't know uh, so yeah you know, you gotta love it when lando or fernando when he feels aggrieved man he has got that huge stick out and starts stirring that pot right? oh man he knows exactly the right words to use too he right does. He yeah pushes he's awesome. all the buttons yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, but, you know, it, I would say on balance, not a great weekend for him, but uh, a better Sunday than Saturday, that's for sure. Yep, that's what you can say. Um, yep. it, was, it was a war out there. It was, it was really tight in the midfield, but to even yeah. get points when the car was kind of, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, it was yep. okay. Lance said it wasn't a great day. He stopped early trying to undercut Yuki, but in the end missed out on the safety car because of that lost places, sent him towards the back. He said the safety car really hobbled his strategy. And even though he crossed the finish line of P13, he got a, pe a penalty for passing Albon and going off track. So that dropped him back down to P15. Mm -hmm. so, there you go. Um, so there you go. <laughs> It's a whole different category, Lance. <laughs> uh, let's see. Alpine, Pierre Gasly. What is that? P13, Esteban Ocon, P10. The dueling Alpines. <laughs> yeah, right. Despite Oof. battling each other in the opening laps, going too wide through like every corner for the first half of the track. That's nuts. Uh, they kept their heads, though. Uh, fair enough racing. Kept their heads. And they were able to uh, bring Esteban home in P10 for the team's very first point of the season Ooh. yeah the team split the strategy of pierre trying to undercut boxing early and then esteban running long uh esteban said that it was important 
that the teams show progress and that they're moving in the right direction. They feel that they are moving in the right direction um, over the last couple of races anyway, and scoring a point is is good. They're proud. He said he's proud of the team for not just raising their hands and giving up. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's good. Uh, Good to see Esteban in the points poll. Yep. It was a, yeah, they go on the points, but I mean, they definitely made progress. I mean, they were, Lighter they're car. awful. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're doing if they're just sh- gradually shaving bits off the car to save the <laughs> weight or something like that. But yeah. obviously, it's a tough haul for them with the le- least amount of power on, on from the engine on the grid and then a heavy car. That that was yeah, awful. That, and that was a recipe for disaster. Yeah, to come back gradually, gradually. But as we've always said, it's a factory team. You shouldn't even be down here in the first place. Yes, yeah. Pierre said he actually had a good race despite no points, said he had good pace. The virtual safety car and safety car didn't help him. Obviously, he boxed early trying Mm -hmm. to undercut Yuki, so he got caught out by that. Uh, He said the most important thing is the team's point. You know, we get a point, we're moving in the right direction. Instead of being in last on the grid, we're up in top 10. That's good. We're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Um, And I would agree with him. And we're getting along famously. (laughs) And we're like, damn. We're buddies, yeah. we're pals. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, let's see, Haas F1, all 20 of them. Uh, Hulkenberg <laughs> had a P11, Kevin Magnussen a P18. Nico had a very good Saturday in the points, assisted by his teammate, and said he wanted another points finish, but said he was struggling for grip for the first entire first stint and the first mm. part of the second stint. He said the virtual safety car hurt, and then when the safety car came out, it moved them to a three-stopper and at the back, but he was able to claw his way all the way back to P11, narrowly missed out on points. I mean, he mm. was like, what, a second or so away from it. Um, I would say on balance, I mean, look, not in the points for him, but he was in the points on Saturday. I'd say it was a good weekend for Nico. Absolutely. I, I mean, it was a good good weekend for the team. And, yeah. and uh, I think, obviously, Hulkenberg's, historically has been getting the results that Magnuson can't get. Yeah. Um, and which is why he's, you know, getting, a, getting another chance at the factory ride. Right. But um, yeah. It, yeah, he's doing a great job. I mean, I, I think the team is doing a great job to even give him a shot at it. I mean, we, they've been a bit of a joke over the past two seasons of just pacing the qualifying and going backwards, but they've, they've really sorted it out and I don't I know agree. what the magic magic dust is, but they really have sorted it out and um he's he's always got a chance i'll tell you what the magic is two years ago i said they need to replace gunther and they did (laughs) finally two years late but they did um i you know i got nothing against gunther a nice guy and all but you know sometimes if the team isn't executing you can't fire the whole team you got to fire the coach and that's what they did um I, i think and i was watching them you know you're right. It's not only is the car doing all right, Nico's performing well, the strategies have been good, uh, yep. the pit stops have been good, uh, they're executing well. I, you know, it's it, it was a good weekend for the team. And so far, on balance, it, it's a good start to the year for them. I just hope they can develop. Um, yeah, it's a good vibe season. in the team and the drivers work together. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, yeah. who would thought Magnussen would work as a team player rather than just for his own individual glory. It's not yeah, really in his wheelhouse. but Yeah, it's exactly right. I was a little surprised he was such the team player. Kevin mm-hmm. had a tough weekend. And while I think the stewards were a little off on Saturday, if I'm honest, uh, I posted this. It, it should have been a warning for the first offense, a black and white for the second, and a penalty for the third offense. Yeah. You know, instead, they came out immediately – uh, he and Lewis were fighting. He he ended up bailing out of the, the corner, went across the chicane. They should have warned him, gave the place back, and moved on. But no, they immediately come out with a 10-second penalty for that. Right. Well, I, But he doesn't really? have to get out of the way. <laughs> then he doesn't so. have to get out of the way. Oh, well, I got the penalty. Well, the hell with it. I'm going to hold him up more to exactly. make sure that Nico gets a, a clean run. I That's mean, what you got to do. Uh, why would they? Uh, yeah, come on, guys. Yeah, you I know? mean, the, he's 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 driving to the rules that are there, and they yeah. they as every team, as every race team tries to do anyway. Um, yeah. you, you use the rules to get as big any advantage you can, and it, with this, it was a bit bizarre that he was using the rules to get penalties 
to hold people back, but not actually, and, and still be able to keep manipulating the traffic behind him because the penalty didn't really matter in the end at that point, right. certainly in the sprint race, right? Um, right. So the, the stewards need to have a rethink of how they, how and what penalties they inst- to institute in certain situations. If they really wanted Magnussen out of the way, then give him a drive-through, or yeah. as you say, tell him to give Lewis the place, something, but, but just giving yeah. him a second penalty when they're not in the points anyway, and he's got the potential of still holding up everybody for his team's benefit. He's going to do it. The team's going to ask him to do it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, and the the rules have to change that process rather than anything else. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, when they came out immediately, they're just hard racing with Lewis. It was actually yeah. very fun to watch. Yeah. Well, it was a bit Lewis cheeky was, for sure. I mean, it's it pretty – it's very cheeky, but yeah, it it was, and I think he was moving under braking a little bit. He was he was desperately trying to keep Lewis behind him. Yeah, running wide at the first chicane. Look, it, it happens, you know. Um, uh, it's good racing. They should have just told the team to to give the position to Lewis and be done with it. But no, they immediately give a ten second penalty. Then it's game on, like you mm-hmm. said. Then it doesn't matter at that point. No. He's going to do anything. And then yep. it's a black and white flag for the second, and then another penalty, and then another. And, and i got to be honest with you, I was a little surprised he was so candid in the press after the race, saying that he agreed he deserved the penalties and his driving was <laughs> silly, but he was just doing the team game. Yeah. You know? So yeah. then the stewards, feeling like they just had pie thrown in their face with him <laughs> admitting it so publicly, well, they couldn't just do nothing, so they haul him before him and then have this whole unsportsman conduct you know, yeah. discussion with him, and all of a sudden it turns into a witch hunt on Kevin, you know, and then, you know, I, I agree, you can go too far, and Kevin did on certain occasions this weekend, but it's but it was in executing the rules as they're st- stated, yeah, and trying to run the team game, and then his his in- incident during the race, yeah, you know, he stuck it in there, should have bailed out of the corner, but everybody after the race said, well, there was plenty of room for him to avoid hitting. Uh, Logan, if he would just ran and shortcutted the corner, yeah. Well, hell, he just got a penalty for it the day before, <laughs> so he wasn't about to run. Off yeah, the corner, I, I yeah. think. Yeah, the, there's a situation there. I, I don't think he was right keeping his nose there because it was obvious. No. Like you know he, that that corner, if you maybe Logan could have seen him, maybe he could have given him room, but ultimately, you know, I think if he'd run to the inside to avoid contact, I don't think he would have had a penalty, but. Um, he was, he was, it was a bit of a 50, 50 shot, honestly. Yeah, probably and, should have uh, checked up. I, he should have checked up, but, and, and, and Logan could have given room, but as we know, you're driving the fastest race car in the world. <laughs> you you kind of have to look terrible. ahead rather than yeah. be looking behind you. It's one thing driving down the highway at 55, checking your mirrors, which no one does anyway. But, um, you know, it's very hard to do when you're trying to be millimeter perfect on, on, getting to yeah. the corner. So I don't really blame Logan for it. I do blame Kevin more. Um, Kevin yeah, did have sure. another option, really. Um, but if Logan had given him a moment more, honestly, Logan would have been in so much crap out there, he probably would have lost it anyway. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when you're going through a chicane like that at 60 miles an hour, you kind of have to look for the apex. Yeah, just know, a little bit. Not yeah. look for Kevin dive bombing on the inside. You mm-hmm. know? Um, I mean, so there, I there's a time where you get you feel awareness, you know, but... yeah. I, I, I don't blame Logan, really. It's just, no, I don't either. I, yeah. I, I think it was on Kevin, and mm-hmm. Kevin should have checked up or bailed out of it. Yeah, but I tell you what, anyone in that field, they, they don't want to mess with the Haas boys. It's like, <laughs> who's coming into town now? It's the Haas boys. Holy moly. Quit. Hide the women. Hide the children. I know. <laughs> God knows what they're going to do next. I know. Cute them, yeah. Lizzie. The boys are back. You know? <laughs> Man. Oh, that was crazy. Kevin, you know, Ke- I... I feel for him. I I like Kevin Magnuson, and I mm. and I like that he is a handful to get around. Uh, yeah, he, he's just aggressive, yeah. and I like that about him. But he said he looked pretty despondent in the in the pen after the race, and right. uh, they asked him about it. He goes, "I, I don't know, it's a bad week." He's just he been goes, browbeating the whole week. He is. You know, he got beat up the whole yeah, weekend. He did. You know? yeah. And uh, and to be honest with you. Some of that's on him, but I don't think all of it was. I think yeah. it turned into a bit of a witch hunt. Yeah, he'll honest. brush it off. But uh, but anyway, he's a Daniel. Brush it off. He said that he hoped he could gain some clarity from this weekend and move on. 
Good on him. After Good a couple of shots of tequila. Cinco de Mayo, boys. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, kick, sabre, sabre, kick. Mm. Um, Valtteri Bottas, P16, Joe Guan Yu, P14. Joe said they tried everything they could. He was stuck behind Albon and couldn't match the straight line speed of the Williams. Even with DRS, he couldn't get past. It was a bit odd, though, because they changed him as softs, and they were then when they changed tires, they... They were going to try work. and run him the whole yeah. rest yeah. of the race on that. I think I think I don't know what they're doing. This team mostly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I re- that was it's, never going to work. Yeah, it's this team is a bit of a weird one for me. Doesn't achieve <laughs> very much. You're kind of like, uh, mm, yeah, Audi. Yeah, <laughs> or Audi just not even showing up. They're just. I don't know. Yeah, it's I it's like know. you're not moved in yet. So we're like, well, oh, I don't know what's going on over there. We'll check in. But uh, yeah. yeah, hopefully what this happens, is. A... I thought they would have been loitering around the garage, you know, saying, "Hey, you might want to try this or that." Yeah. Is it a case that Audi's not there, and then like magically in 2026, all these black cars and SUVs show up, and all these people get out <laughs> yeah. and come in and bum rush everybody in the right, factory? right, right. What does that look like? I like, don't know. It doesn't seem there's a lot of Audi influence on this team right now. Man. They just kind of left them on their own. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, we're using this budget to build our nice new wind tunnel and surroundings Engine. for next year. So you yeah. guys just play in the sand over here and we'll get right. back to you at the end of the year. By the way, none of you are going to be here next year. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No mullets either. All right. <laughs> no, please, yeah. The yeah. mullet killed it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it was all fun and games, Valtteri, until the mullet. All right. Yeah. A lot of the Germans do like a good mullet. I'll they tell, I'll tell you. Mullet. Yeah, I saw I saw something on TikTok the other day. It's so true. It said it's talking about it here in America. It's sort of a trend with all these young teenage boys, early twenties, and so they said, "Why are all the young men walking around looking like alpacas?" <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, anyway, I can't complain. I don't have hair, so yeah. There you go. Uh, Valtteri said uh, the safety car cost him, and they were trying a different strategy than Joe. He said they just didn't have the pace and and uh, that they thought that they would in Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, so their expectations were not right sized heading into this weekend. <laughs> apparently, um, uh, it comes out of correlation data, I think. Uh, but, yeah, uh, but hopefully, Bodas got some good video of him jumping around the beats in short shorts or I nothing or whatever the hell he butt- did shots on the beach, yeah you know, for all, his we'll next year's butt calendar <laughs> i'm sure you got a copy hanging on your wall back oh yeah somewhere. absolutely yeah yeah because who doesn't want to wake up to valtteri Bus's butt <laughs> uh, so anyway all right down to williams are we yes we are we're down to williams wow. claire williams i think was there paul oh yeah good to see her in the back of the garage it could only so, have been better if they found Pat for or no Patty Lowe and Patty Lowe, yeah, sit next to her for the race. Yeah. That would oh, be great. Yeah, hello Patty, yeah. hello Claire. Hello. So uh, I got some pots for you. Okay, mm, that's just nice. leave them on the table. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Well, well I guess Claire walks in and say, "Well, I guess nothing's changed." Yeah, you know? right. You're still last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, see, it this. wasn't all my fault. Yeah. Oh, James Vowles, <laughs> better team principal. Okay. <laughs> You're still running last. Uh, yeah. uh, anyway, good to see Claire there. Uh, Williams, Alex Albon, P12, Lewin, Sergeant, DNF. Um, uh, uh, did we see classified P17? Maybe he was. I don't know. Um, I can't remember. Um, Alex said they were struggling for grip all weekend long. Said on Saturday that his tires were good for about six corners and they were done. Yeah. Um, that's how bad it was on Saturday when, you know, and they had, and that was in Q2. That wasn't when they were the, the qualifying sprint where they had to use the soft either. But, um, he said it was one of the most difficult races he's had in his career so far. Oof. Um, and he also said that he had floor damage, uh, after the race, uh, they discovered that too. So that wasn't good. Um, the safety car from Logan's incident came at the absolute wrong time for Alex. Oof. Didn't help him out. Um, and again, Logan's race, as we mentioned, was uh, compromised. He had that collision with Kevin at his home race. He wanted to do well. I would say, actually, on balance, he was actually doing well this weekend. I think he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was holding his um, own. He was. Yeah, he was right. He was there, there, about, there, yeah. thereabouts with Alex all weekend long. Out qualified him. Yeah, which is difficult, you know. Yeah, Alex yeah. Is the heck of a driver, and but it's difficult to 
for anyone to see that progress if the car's floundering at the back anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. you're 17th. Well done, sir. You know, yeah. it's like, hmm. Mm. But it's probably the hardest lap he's ever driven, you know, throwing everything out there, you know, just to be ahead of his teammates somehow. Yeah. So. Anyway, all right. Mm-hmm. Shall we do some awards? Let's do it. Let's do it. Move the race. Woohoo! Seriously, Todd. Yes. Seriously, we're going to do move the race. Yeah. Uh, who'd you have? Well, I, I got. We had the I got, same thing. Yeah, we did have the same things. Really, the tactics of McLaren and the ability to use that tactic. and But, you know, holding Lando out there for that long, not, not hair triggering reactions to things and just having a good plan and knowing exactly what they had and that obviously as i said that long run on those mediums gave them massive opportunity and they they jumped on it yeah i agree whether the, this track just flattered their chassis and didn't red bull or not doesn't really mm-hmm. matter i think what mclaren has done is shown up with this massive upgrade package done it in a cost cap methodically moved yeah, the men and women awoking should be incredibly proud of yeah. what they've pulled off and yeah. and then you know they come to race day uh, oscar looks fantastic first half of the race uh, the strategy everything was executed perfectly by lando who never complained about his tires they've talked to me because the tires are fine let's stay out you know he was going yeah. Keep going. um he, yeah just pure a joy to see that and yeah. i'm you know from a ferrari fan they beat my team and and but i'm elated for them i think they yeah fabulous. As, and as i said you know uh, yeah that was great and so that was a great move to call that strategy it worked out but there, there were some great tussles and great passes in the race there was numerous ones actually i mean yeah. most of them drs assisted but some you know people had to, yeah yet yeah, to be assertive to make a pass there for sure and um i think drivers did a good job in Having good dice is being assertive, but not just clouting yeah. every single wall that was out there, which was numerous. And I think if I think I heard them say, was a twenty or twenty first British driver to win a race. Oh, how about that? There we go. Well done. I'll be honest. You would have been twenty twentieth, twenty first, eighteenth, whatever, if they yeah. had just handed you the keys. Yeah, and no one else had finished the race. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd have done a magnus on everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good. all right let's uh talk donkey of the race we'll do it live get down all right paul donkey of the race who you got all right well i could have called the fia for their for their uh safety car thing but luckily it, it we blew, we'll blow that over. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. Just sort it out. But I'm going to pick the bollard that Max Verstappen <laughs> whacked. Can we not just bring in some cones from, you know, the, the construction on I-95 and actually figure something out? That if you tap it, it's not going to just bring out a full course yellow. That We've got to be better than this, right? Don't you think? We've got to be, be a bit more inventive, can't we? Yeah. It's almost yeah. like there's going to be this quarter. What do we... Here, uh, we got the sawhorse here. Here, we don't put that there. No, here, grab that cone off at the highway. Yeah, put that clean that up a little bit. It's still got some gunk on it. Yeah. Yeah. Do they not yeah. make a a little? I don't know. Surely, let's just there's rethink an that process for yeah. for the uh, uh, for the people that make crap for racetracks. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Whoever that is, uh, mm-hmm. who is the company that? There's companies out there. That's what they tech do. pro you mean or tech just, pro and yeah. others that make crap for racing. There's probably something on Uline you can order that could probably ah uh, yeah do or Granger right yeah yeah, yeah. maybe yeah all right <laughs> I um uh, that's a good good shout uh, I am gonna give it a little joint uh, stewards and Kevin I think Kevin kind of architected himself into the villain position a little this weekend mm-hmm. uh, so he's he's you know, guilty of that. Um, probably could have dialed it down a little um, <laughs> and still achieved the same result. Um, anyway, uh, you know, his angry Dane routine. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so there you have that. But I think the stewards were ham fisted this weekend. Uh, in Was your buddy Derek Warwick Stewart again this weekend? No, he wasn't, okay. but Vita Antonio Liuzzi was. Oh, like, good grief. <laughs> yeah, I think there's your problem. There's so, your what, problem. I didn't get my full chance in that one. By God, I'm going to screw these guys. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, there was that. Uh, the safety car, picking up mm-hmm. Max and not the leader. Um, 
Yeah, I'm a little surprised the F1 TV cover. He said, well, you know, it's understandable. Max is usually leading. He's like, no. no. <laughs> they have an entire, they have a phalanx of people looking at monitors who know who's leading this race. Yeah. You know, you know, just somebody get on the horn to burn my lander and tell him when to pull out. Yeah, know? please. Uh, yeah. Burns <laughs> rip roaring to go down there, you know. All right. Uh, final words is a uh, drive of the race. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think the whole world liked his pace. Not, not for pace. Sergio's, but yeah, our driver yes, of the sir. race, for sure. Flew through that turn one like it wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> Such was the pace. Yes. Of the Sergio. Uh, yeah. I think this is, a, this is an obvious one, is it not? Yeah, it's got to, to be. Lando? Got to be yeah, Lando gotta Norris. Got to be. Gotta be. How can yeah. it not be? How can you not like that kid, he's, Cole? He's, yeah. He's a good kid. He is, he is, yeah. Yeah. And and I was watching him, you know, I, I went over, hopped over after the race and looked at the onboards and stuff. I mean, he's a hell of a good driver. Yeah. You know? He really is, you know. And I'm not yeah. taking any way. I, you know, and we always talk about, I know the press, and I know Sky Sports and everybody wants to big up this whole Lewis Hamilton, Max, Verstappen rivalry. But Max is not in Lewis's peer group. Mm -hmm. Fernando is, you know, uh, those guys, Sergio Perez is those that's Lewis's era, mm -hmm. Max, George Russell, Lando, yeah. Charles Leclerc, they're all in that same peer group, you know? Um, and I think, I think all of them were genuinely happy for their buddy Lando. Absolutely. You know, yeah. He wears his heart in his sleeve. He does. Threw a couple of F-bombs out there, which was interesting. He did. Said the F-bomb yeah. live. <laughs> <laughs> podium ceremony. It's they didn't even bleep it was. out, which is uh, no, no. Yeah, and you would think that it might be on uh, broadcast. Yeah. Usually, it's a little not. delay in there, but yeah, yeah. good yeah, for you. Not. Rock and roll, line, Let Lando. that be a lesson to Crofty. No f bombs, Crofty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, good to see Aunt Davison back. Good to see JB back. Um, good to see uh, over on the F1 broadcast, uh, Ruth Buscom. That, that yeah, she does Ruth a good in. job. She she knows yeah. her stuff. Yeah, she yeah. does know her stuff. Yeah, she spent a lot of time on that Sauber pit wall. Yeah, and she was very good when she was there. You know, she was it, good. Even if the Sauber wasn't great, she was usually making yeah. some pretty darn good calls. So I, I, I like having her on there. She really good. Some. Yeah, I do She's, too. There's a lot of data out there. When it's one thing if you're managing one team, one thing if you're looking at the big picture of all the teams, and she actually yeah. does a great job. Yeah, when you think of like Hannah at Red Bull doing a fantastic strategy mm -hmm. job over there, think of Ruth, uh, who was at Sauber. You think of Bernie Collins. I love having Bernie Collins on Sky's broadcast. You have to you have uh, to listen a little harder though. Got to listen, you yeah. know. It's a, yeah. yeah, but you should know that, Paul. You've spent a lot of drunken nights with Tommy Byrne. You ought to <laughs> yes, I have. You ought to be able to pick up that Irish pretty well, can't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, I love Bertie. Uh, and she's got the tires nailed. I mean, she's yeah. <laughs> down to the nth degree. So and Ruth did a great job too. So kudos to Ruth, yep. uh, to Will and the entire team over there. Great job. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, quick mailbag. You've got mail. Uh, Ooh. Mr. Jury asked this, Paul, he says, I get such a kick out of K Mag. Uh, saying, quote, they're going to give you another penalty. Go ahead. I'm out of points now. Anyways, <laughs> um, Question for you folks uh, who've watched a heck of a lot more racing than I have. Is there any solution to the traffic during qualifying? Speaking of K-Mag. Uh, single, single lap qualifying. Single lap qualifying. Mm -hmm. like they used to do that mm -hmm. back in the day. So you got to go back uh, late 90s, yeah. early 2000s. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that was the solution to it. The other solution is, you know, less cars on track at one time. But I, I think... The games obviously get a little silly, but you know when you're starting twenty cars out there trying to get a qualifying lap on a on a track, it's pretty darn difficult, you know. Um, yeah. So unless they start splitting in, into different groups, so there's only ten cars on the track at any one time. I don't know, but the the ultimate solution is single car qualifying, which a lot of people have never seen, and it was I interesting. Like yep. I would say it it's, it, yeah. it was its own thing. I. I think, you know, when we see Q3, that's probably the best qualifying you're going to see, right? There's enough room on the track. 
um, you can keep track of the cars when you're trying to keep track of 20 cars and they're blocking each other and all that stuff. The Q1s are a little difficult to fathom what's going on until after it's already over, but the single qualifying, you could actually absolutely see what's going on. Yeah. You could follow one car going around. You could see if it was up or down and it was, it was all or nothing right. in those, those things. That was a different, obviously approach also for the drivers. Yeah, it was. You know, the only other thing I was thinking of, you could just pick a time, whether it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, it doesn't really matter. Pick a time. And that's the time for qualifying. Mm -hmm. So all the teams go out. But just know that at, at the 10-minute mark, we're going to stop, we're going to cut the, the slowest three or whatever. Yeah. And at the 20-minute mark, we're going to cut the next chunk. And then, then, and by the time it gets down to the end, that's your that's your. But field, I think right? they tried that. Yeah, yeah, and that didn't and quite, quite like work out. I'm try. I was work. talking about that this weekend, actually. Yeah, they tried that at Australia, and it was a disaster. And I can't it remember was. why now. But, but wasn't it? Wasn't it because? Did they have those marks uh, in time, where it forced people to get out and run? Because if you didn't run in the first ten minutes, you're getting cut. Something it was something weird, and I, I, can't, I honestly I can't remember. We're gonna have to look back at it. I'm sure yeah. some people do remember it more vividly, uh, yeah. but also remember the qualifying when you had to run with fuel, and you had to yes. run the fuel you were gonna start in. Then Started. we were watching yeah. people trundle around for laps, just burning, <laughs> yes. burning fuel. It was like, Burn oh yeah, fuel. this is good for the environment right here. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah. Keep yeah. doing that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it made them all run, you know, mm -hmm. so there was lots of action on the track, but nobody was really going at it. No, there was They're cars just, just running. People. It was like a, watching people go down the motorway, honestly. Yeah, right, right. Oh, just fuel uh, burning out of the pipes. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Paul's right. Single lap qualifying would be it. And he said, the second question, I'm greedy. There's been a spate of failing to follow race director penalties this year. What does this actually mean? Uh, it's usually just a violation of the penalty, you know, if you've got, a, it was like, was it Alonzo got it and got out of it somehow where you're supposed to follow your five second penalty, but they don't follow it and they do it less time or do, don't do it in time and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Or don't serve the penalty in the right way. In the right way, whatever that yeah. penalty is. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So there you go. All right. Well, that does it for the oh. Miami Grand Prix review. Okay. How about that? We're at the How end. How about that? Yeah. So a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. We could not and would not do this without you. If you uh, like this podcast and if you feel uh, you'd like to support the podcast, you can do that by going to our website, theparkforma.com. Scroll to the bottom. It's, and there's a link there or towards the top on the right-hand side. There's a link that will take you to Patreon. You can support us over there. And if you do support us on Patreon, um, you will get a link. Uh, to join the audience during the recording of these podcasts. So uh, that's a lot of fun. We love doing that with our Patreon supporters and record live and have interactions with them. Uh, if you like this podcast, go over to your favorite podcast player and give us some good rating, give us some love over there. We always appreciate that. You can share your opinion on this podcast at theparkforme.com. Um, a little programming note. Going, uh, having some work done this weekend uh, on me. So, uh, is it your my, cheeks this time, or which? Yeah, I'm gonna have a, a, a lift. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to, you know, trying to get this taken care of. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe a hair transplant. Yeah, I, yeah, no. Uh, but uh, <laughs> my plan now is to recover and to be right back on the podcast next weekend uh, with Grace. But if it's late. You all will know why. Um, but uh, so anyway, just a little programming note. Um, Paul, where do you go next with Harley? Next, racing? in two days, I'm off to Laguna Seca. <whistles> yep. So we got IMSA race at Laguna Seca. Then I come home, clean my underwear, and then I head down to Coda for another SRO race. That's a nice. three-hour race, an endurance nice. race for the SRO crew. The only oh, one. Cool. Really do so. That's that's exciting. Cool. So we're gonna yeah. have to do pit stops and refueling and all that stuff in in our, our SRO team. So Can hopefully, people, fo people follow the SRO at GT World uh, on GT YouTube. World. Yeah, on YouTube, it's you yeah. don't even pay to see it and just tune in, see when the races are coming up, and they show them live. So it's pretty yeah. cool, actually. And it's cool because it's not like two idiots calling it. You got Calvin Fish there. 
Yeah, and Calvin. Yeah, he's he's Calvin always in the paddock, and he does a great job. And yeah, uh, yeah and so Calvin are buddies, right? Yeah, yeah, we've been buddies yeah. for decades. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And um, so no, it's it's always good to see Calvin. He does a great job. He's he got does. a lot of insight into it, and there's a lot of racing going on at the SRA. So if you're in the Austin area or whatever, yeah, come on by and by and see yeah. us. It's going to be a fun fun event, and hopefully we can jump from our second place championship yeah, positions first. and make make some headway because we're going to get extra points for the endurance race so we've got to execute that for sure but luckily we've got a wee bit of experience with these longer yeah. races so i'm hoping you know we've got a little advantage over some other teams that may be doing one for the first yeah. time yeah that'd be great well excellent all right until next week when we come back and do it all over again i this is todd aka negative camber saying so long that's it man game over man it's game over